What's up YouTube, welcome back to another episode of Action Recap, where we rate action scenes in our favorite movies. I'm your host, Dean Malex, and after watching the 2021 reboot of Mortal Kombat, it got me motivated to cover WB Animation's most gruesome film yet, Mortal Kombat Legends, Scorpion's Revenge. Directed by Ethan Spaulding, best known for his directorial efforts on Avatar Last Airbender, aka the best animated show of all time, as well as a few DC projects which include Justice League Throne of Atlantis and Batman Assault on Arkham. So if you need a director that can deliver visceral animated action, this is your guy. Scorpion's Revenge stars an entirely new voice cast from the Mortal Kombat games, with the exception of Scorpion being voiced by Patrick Seitz, who previously voiced the iconic Hellfire Ninja in Mortal Kombat vs DC, MK9, Injustice Gods Among Us, and MKX, as well as Sub-Zero who is once again voiced by Steve Blum, who voiced the iconic Ice Cold Ninja in MKX, Injustice 2, and MK11. Scorpion's Revenge is a retelling of the original Mortal Kombat story that is based on the popular fighting game franchise created by Ed Boon and John Tobias. It is the first Mortal Kombat film to be produced at Warner Bros. Animation, and is the first Mortal Kombat animated project since the 1996 animated series Mortal Kombat Defenders of the Realm. The main focus of the story centers around Scorpion, seeking revenge on those who murdered his family and clan after being resurrected by Quan Chi. While Liu Kang, Sonya Blade, and Johnny Cage are chosen as champions of Earthrealm to participate in the Mortal Kombat tournament for the fate of their world. The film was released on April 14, 2020 and was met with high praise from fans and critics alike. Personally, as a fan of Mortal Kombat, Scorpion's Revenge is arguably one of the best video game movies adapted to date, which I guess isn't saying much when you look at the track record for most video game movies. That being said, I even favor Scorpion's Revenge over the original 1995 film, minus the soundtrack of course. 1. Because Scorpion and Sub-Zero aren't mindless drones in this movie compared to their 90s live-action counterparts, and 2. The film is rated R, which means there's no holding back on the over-the-top violence and gruesome fatalities that the Mortal Kombat games are known for. However, Scorpion's Revenge is by no means a perfect film, as the story does tend to have some narrative pacing issues and odd character design choices. For example, the Black Knuckles. What's up with that? as well as the trouble of having to focus the story on Scorpion while trying to balance the spotlight with the three main heroes of Earthrealm. With that being said, does Scorpion's Revenge deliver the most gruesome fatal blows ever put to animation? Well, let's find out and jump into the action. Kicking the action off, we head to feudal Japan to witness the Lin Kuei invasion, where Shira Ryu, Grandmaster Hanzo Hasashi, and his young son Satoshi are ambushed on their way home by the Lin Kuei, a rival clan of the Shira Ryu. Though outnumbered, Hanzo kills them all in the most brutal ways possible before and especially after discovering that the Lin Kuei have slaughtered the rest of his clan, including his wife Harumi. Hanzo holds nothing back against his invaders, slicing various Lin Kuei body parts in pieces, whether it be their heads, arms, fingers, and whatever else Hanzo can get his blades synced into. This opening sequence is a great showcase of what to expect from the film moving forward, whether it be the excessive gore, the x-ray visuals originating from Mortal Kombat 9, as well as the addition of blood-drenched backdrops that heighten Hanzo's raging fury. After the Lin Kuei pawns have been dealt with, Sub-Zero, the Grand Master of the Lin Kuei, appears holding Satoshi by the neck and demands Hanzo to stand down. Being the cryomancer that he is, Sub-Zero restrains Hanzo with ice and then murders Satoshi in front of his father's eyes. With no remorse, Sub-Zero then walks over to Hanzo and turns him into an ice kebab. Sometime in the future, we get Special Forces Blade vs. China Rock, where we see Sonya Blade in a street fight in what looks to be Hong Kong, with her opponent looking like Dwayne The Rock Johnson if he were born in China. Early in the fight, it seems like a good back and forth bout between Sonya and China Rock, but once Sonya gets headbutted and sent into a Captain Marvel like flashback of her Special Forces training, Sonya recovers and starts to really lay the hands and feet on China Rock. <laughs> Hope that guy's got insurance. Eventually, Sonya beats down China Rock with a steel pipe like he owned her money. With Sonya finishing the fight by performing a downward heel kick to the face and a one way trip to the dental office. Thus, scoring an invitation to the Mortal Kombat tournament as well as a lead to Fine Kano, leader of the mercenary group Black Dragon. Meanwhile, deep within the depths of the hellish world of the Nether Realm, we have Hanzo vs. the Demon Torturer. Here, Hanzo Sasashi is resurrected in the Nether Realm, hanging from volcanic pillars with bladed chains synced into his arms and legs and is soon greeted by the Demon Torturer. No really, that's the character's name in the credits. The Demon Torturer. 
Anyways, the Netherrealm native shows off his volcanic blood to Hanzo and starts monologuing about this hell-like world and its ruler Shinnok. Now you see, you feel pain, though you can no longer perish. Which then gives Hanzo enough incentive to fight for his freedom by pulling a Mike Tyson and using the volcanic blood of the torturer's ear to break free of his chains, followed by another stylized x-ray visual that'll make your grandparents' knees buckle. <laughs> With no time to waste, Hanzo goes to the bench of weapons, picks up the largest sword he can find, and then slices the torturer in half. <laughs> However, Hanzo isn't safe in the Netherrealm just yet, as it seems the whole neighborhood wants a piece of the action. There are thousands of us, and only one of you. <laughs> Minus one. Eventually, Hanzo meets with the sorcerer Quan Chi, who persuades Hanzo to fight for him in the Mortal Kombat tournament and help free Shinnok so that he can exact his revenge on Sub-Zero. Hanzo agrees and becomes a demonic ninja known as Scorpion. Upon arrival at Shang Tsung's island, where the tournament is taking place, we see our three Earthrealm heroes get acquainted with one another. Recruited by the Thunder God Raiden, protector of Earthrealm, there's Liu Kang, a Shaolin monk who's been training his whole life for Mortal Kombat, Johnny Cage, a Hollywood actor, and Special Forces agent Sonya Blade, whom we recently saw smash the pearly whites out of China Rock. Scorpion arrives at the island at the same time and moves ahead on his mission to steal Shinnok's amulet on Quan Chi's orders, but is then confronted by Raiden and persuades Scorpion to not follow through on the deal. Meanwhile, in the mess hall, we get a nice cameo from Natara, a character introduced in Mortal Kombat Deception. Along with Earthrealm's champions getting courtside tickets to see Jax vs. Goro. Jax is Sonya's commanding officer who's been captured by Kano and is forced to fight Goro, Outworld's strongest champion. Unfortunately, this encounter was set up by Shang Tsung as a form of quote unquote entertainment before Mortal Kombat officially commenced. As the fight between the Shokan Prince and the Special Forces Major begins, Jax soon realizes he's way out of his league, which leads to Goro punishing Jax severely by throwing him around like a ragdoll and dragging him across the force field barrier. After toying with Jax long enough, Goro decides to rip Jax's arms off that is painfully detailed with the x-ray visuals to overly sell the brutality of Jax's defeat. But just before Goro can finish off Jax for good, Raiden intervenes and heals Jax's wounds. Though for some reason Jax goes back into the custody of Kano, which makes me wonder, where was Raiden 30 seconds ago? Consulting with the Elder Gods? After Jax's extreme physical therapy session with Goro, the Mortal Kombat tournament now officially begins, with each contender warped into different parts of the island to fight in one-on-one -on -one combat. The first fight in the tournament showcasing the film is Johnny Cage vs. Baraka. Set in an abandoned temple, Johnny is about to quickly learn that this tournament is no movie set. That, that is one hell of a costume. With no hesitation, Baraka attacks Johnny at a savage pace, showing clear intentions of wanting to turn Cage into a shish kebab. The fight plays out more like a game of cat and mouse, where Johnny is running to different rooms avoiding Baraka's Tarkatan blades. Eventually, Johnny and Baraka end up in a gunpowder room where Baraka accidentally causes a fire, which then leads to an explosion, causing the temple to collapse on itself. Prompting Johnny to jump off the ledge to safety, give Baraka the double bird, and then leave the raging Tarkatan left behind to be crushed by the falling debris. Toasty. The next fight in the tournament is Sonya Blade vs. Reptile. Deep in the jungle-like area of the island, Sonya is being stalked by an unseeable figure. Unaware, Sonya soon gets battered around by her invisible foe, forcing Sonya to retreat and find cover. The invisible being continues to pursue Sonya like a predator hunting down a Schwarzenegger, but ends up getting tricked by Sonya to have the camouflage adversary reveal himself to be Reptile. Sonya then tries to blow Reptile's head off with her sidearm, but Reptile dodges the bullet and quickly disarms her, retaliating back with his own brand of lethal projectiles, Acid Spit. Reptile then tries to get the drop on Sonya again with his active camouflage, but being covered in mud wasn't going to do him any favors. In hand-to-hand -hand combat, it's clear Sonya is proving to be the superior fighter, though seconds later Reptile grabs her by the leg and then throws her across the swamp. However, Sonya quickly recovers from the toss, then charges back a reptile like the Flash tapping into the Speed Force, baiting Reptile to go in for the grab, to then crush his spine complemented with a bone-crunching x-ray, and a fatality via decapitation with choke wire. Yeah. 
On another part of the island, we have Scorpion hunting down a member of the Lin Kuei. Here, a lone Lin Kuei ninja is heavily outclassed against Scorpion Shirayu's skill set and fire imbued powers given to him by Quan Chi. With minimal effort, Scorpion is able to coil up the Lin Kuei pawn and then demands for the location of Sub Zero. Oh, so you chose in death. Scorpion then decapitates his Lin Kuei foe and teleports away to resume the hunt for his revenge. Somewhere on a more peaceful part of the island, viewers witness Liu Kang versus Katana. Both the Shaolin Monk and Princess of Outworld seem evenly matched in terms of hand-to-hand -hand combat, but Liu Kang does seem to be holding back as he doesn't want to harm such a worthy opponent, or maybe he just doesn't like to hit women. I don't think I can hit a girl. They're soft. Katana does her best with the use of her deadly fans to turn the tables by a way of summoning a gust of wind to get the upper hand on Liu Kang. But ultimately, Liu Kang is able to pin her down, threatens Katana with a fiery fist, and urges her to forfeit the fight. Katana eventually submits in defeat, Liu Kang is victorious, and they both walk their separate ways. What makes you so sure you will win? Because I have something no one in Outworld has. What? Hope. With the tournament near its end, we fast forward to the Black Dragon Ambush, where in an attempt to stop the Earth Realm heroes from reaching the final round of the tournament, Kano has deployed a large group of Black Dragon assassins to infiltrate the island to kill them. All hope seems lost for Earthrealm's champions, but as it turns out, Scorpion is disguised as one of the Black Dragons and helps Liu Kang, Sonya, and Johnny take them out. With Scorpion showing no mercy using his kunai to score a triple headshot, wanted style, followed by ripping out all three of the Black Dragon's spinal cords, adding to the highlight reel of this gore fest. God damn, that was brutal! Everyone gets a chance to shine the battle against the Black Dragons. Well, except for Johnny Cage, because Sonya thinks he can't really fight, thus lead to covering his butt the whole time. Liu Kang puts his Shaolin Monk training on full display, tapping into some form of Ultra Instinct, allowing him to dodge bullets, execute gravity-defying bicycle kicks, split arms in half, and decapitate a Black Dragon via flaming uppercut. With Black Dragon members falling one by one, Kano takes matters into his own hands by whipping out two assault rifles and laying waste to everyone on the battlefield, including his own Black Dragon comrades. However, Kano's shooting frenzy is soon put to a halt as Sub-Zero appears and attacks him for meddling with the tournament. Now with Sub-Zero showing up out of the blue, get it, cause Sub-Zero's main color is blue? Alright, I'll kill myself. This leads up to the moment we've all been waiting for, Scorpion vs. Sub-Zero. With no restraint, Scorpion attacks Sub-Zero by kicking him off the gate and onto the middle bridge. Scorpion then tells Sub-Zero he will die for what he did to his family and clan, but interestingly, Sub-Zero seems to have no idea what he's talking about. The battle between the ninjas of fire and ice is quite thrilling, with both Grand Masters countering each other's attacks as the fight goes on. Eventually, Scorpion gets the upper hand and breaks Sub-Zero's arm and hands with another X-ray animation to better showcase the damage. Sub-Zero quickly recovers and tries to take down Scorpion with frozen projectiles. Even though the Icicles are able to hit the merciless Hellfire Ninja, Scorpion uses the Ice Shards against Sub-Zero by stabbing him in the chest and the shoulder, followed up with a fist to Sub-Zero's face, showcasing another X-ray visual. Finally ending the fight with a stage fatality by tackling Sub-Zero off the bridge into a pit of spikes, impaling them both, killing Sub-Zero in the process, and Scorpion successfully getting his revenge. Meanwhile, our Earthrealm champions decide to split up after the ambush, with Johnny and Sonya pursuing Kano in order to rescue Jax, while Liu Kang heads to Shang Tsung's throne room for the final round of the tournament. In the pit, Quan Chi appears to Scorpion and reveals that it was actually him who was responsible for the massacre of his clan and family. It was easy. I use sorcery to hide my identity, to make the Lin Kuei do as I wanted. Leaving him to die, an enraged Scorpion removes himself from the spike to exact his revenge on Quan Chi for his deception. Catching up with Sonya and Johnny, we're treated with a dungeon showdown, where Sonya attempts to save Jax, whom is being held hostage by Kano. And to make things more complicated, Kano releases a mob of monsters and demons from their cells to rip Sonya apart. But being the badass that she is, Sonya shows no fear and runs straight into the fight, holding her own against these large adversaries. Eventually, Sonya gets overwhelmed by the onslaught of enemies, but just before she gets eaten alive by a winged creature, Johnny Cage comes in with a flying kick to save the damsel in distress, proving to Sonya that he indeed knows how to fight. Impossible! Holy sh Johnny Cage can fight. Sonya and Johnny then team up to finish off the rest of the goons and seem to do so with ease. Once Sonya and Johnny confront Kano, Kano tries to get them to back off by threatening Jax's life, but Jax ends up biting Kano's hand, allowing Sonya to get the drop on Kano with a hammer to the face. Ah! 
With Sonya and Johnny now able to free Jax, Major Briggs gives the down Kano a parting gift before leaving the dungeon. <laughs> Did I say parting gift? I meant a heavy stomp to the face. Up in Shang Tsung's throne room, we have the final round of Mortal Kombat, Liu Kang vs. Goro. Once Liu Kang reaches Shang Tsung's throne room, the sorcerer offers Liu Kang a deal in Outworld where he can live as a king if he forfeits the tournament. But Liu Kang refuses Shang Tsung's offer, which leads to Shang Tsung summoning Goro to challenge the Shaolin Monk in the last fight to determine Earthrealm's fate. Throughout the fight, Liu Kang does well against the four-armed brute, but Goro's immense strength does seem to be pushing Liu Kang's physical limits, even the use of his flame conjuring abilities isn't enough to keep Goro down. While enjoying the fight from afar, Shang Tsung calls out Quan Chi for trying to kill him by poisoning his drink, thus leads to Quan Chi being held captive in a scorching bond cast by Shang Tsung, and then tells Quan Chi he'll be executed after the tournament is over. With Liu Kang seemingly outmatched by Goro's physical strength, the Shokan Prince attempts to finish the fight by having Liu Kang suffer the same fate as Jax, but this time, Goro goes for all four limbs. Unfortunately, Raiden must helplessly watch Liu Kang suffer, as he is forbidden from interfering with the tournament. Soon, your weak species will be no more. But suddenly, Goro gets kunai to the face, followed by his entire skull and neck getting ripped out from his body, leaving nothing left but a blood-drenched flab of skin. The killer is revealed to be Scorpion, obviously, who has recovered from his massive flesh wound. Shang Tsung then attempts to have Scorpion fight the worn out Liu Kang so that Outworld can secure the 10th victory in Mortal Kombat. But Scorpion refuses, takes the Sorcerer hostage, and then willingly forfeits the tournament, securing Liu's position as the victor of Mortal Kombat. This act forces Shang Tsung to retreat to Outworld, and the island soon begins to collapse due to Shang Tsung's presence not being there to sustain it, which then leads to Liu Kang and Raiden retreating to the docks to meet up with Sonya, Johnny, and Jax to leave by boat. Even though the island is collapsing, Scorpion still has a score to settle, which sets up the final fight of the film, Scorpion vs. Quan Chi. The fight starts off fast and furious with Quan Chi trying to keep Scorpion at a distance with his magic, and even catches Scorpion's kunai as a way to transfer an electric attack. A fight between the creator and the created puts both of their physical and supernatural abilities on full display, ranging from uses of teleportation, weapon conjuring, and a bunch of body cringing x-ray effects to boot. Eventually, Scorpion is able to teleport behind Quan Chi, shoving his swords into Quan Chi's back, allowing Scorpion to lay the beat down on the albino sorcerer. After beating Quan Chi to a bloody pulp, Scorpion then uses his kunai to rip Quan Chi's arms off and then uses his kunai again to puncture his spine, giving viewers one last x-ray to savor this brutal moment. Scorpion then says his classic line, GET OVER HERE! <laughs> cementing Quan Chi's fate by ripping his head off, and then proceeds to go full Ghost Rider by incinerating Quan Chi's entire body with his scorching breath, performing the last fatality of the film. At long last, after truly obtaining his vengeance, Scorpion decides to stay in the temple and be crushed by the falling debris so that he may join his family and clan in the afterlife. By my count, there were 13 significant action scenes in Scorpion's Revenge, with most of them ending in vicious over-the-top fatalities, just like in the games. The amount of detail and choreography that went into the action scenes were top-notch for a direct-to-video feature. Highly recommend this film to anyone who's a fan of Mortal Kombat, or simply loves violence in their daily dose of entertainment. So, when looking at the action tier scale, Scorpion's Revenge definitely delivers a solid A tier level of action. When looking at our Action Medal Awards, the Epic Showdown Award for the best action scene goes to the Lin Kuei Invasion. Due to this extensive sequence being equally parts visceral as it is emotional, as well as a great setup for the overall tone of the film. The Bruce Lee Award for the best fighter goes to Sonya Blade. Honestly, I was surprised to see Sonya given a lot of attention in this film, from taking down China Rock, decapitating Reptile, hammering in Kano's eye, and even stomping in Johnny's balls to the testicular realm. It's like she said, With the blade, you're gonna get cut. The Crane Kick Award for the best action highlight goes to the death of Quan Chi. There were so many exciting moments to choose from in Scorpion's Revenge, but in the end, I thought the most satisfying death to witness was Scorpion getting his revenge on the Netherrealm Sorcerer himself. The Ballistic Award for the worst action scene goes to Liu Kang vs Katana. Honestly, the battle between Liu Kang and Katana was quite lackluster to say the least. Even Johnny vs Baraka had some spectacle to their fight. Here's hoping the Princess of Adania's combat prowess isn't wasted in the sequel. That is, if there is a sequel. So let me just think in the comments down below about the action of Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpion's Revenge. Do you think this is the best Mortal Kombat adaptation to date? And what are your thoughts on the over-the-top violence? 
If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button, it really helps me out, subscribe for more content from me on the Action Recap. I'm Dean Malex, I'll see you in the future.